Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChichiCheckIt.com here with another freaking awesome Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going over something that I learned how to do pretty recently in Photoshop CS5 Extended. And so if you don't have CS5 Extended, I'm sorry, this tutorial is just not for you, alright? So what we're going over today is how to take an object that's uh, 3D and it's made with Photoshop's Repose option, and we're going to learn how to make 3D shadows. And yes, these shadows are actually 3D and they're made by using 3D lights rather than using the, uh, what's it called, the, the, the drop shadow layer style? Yeah, we're not using that, so don't even think about it, alright? <laughs> All right, and so I would kind of demonstrate how the lights work and all that with this particular picture I already made, but um, it takes forever to actually render out shadows, so I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm just going to show you how it works as we go. So let's go ahead and start off and make our new document. And so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep this at 1920 by 1080 so we can actually see everything that's kind of going on. But for those of you at home, I would stick with something a little lower resolution so that way it doesn't take forever for it to render for you. So maybe 1280 by 720 or maybe lower resolution. I don't know. Completely up to you. But I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to set my background contents to white and we'll hit OK. And let's go ahead and zoom this up a little bit. And so uh, with this layer, we're going to go ahead and double click that background layer and hit OK. And we're going to make this background a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and add a gradient overlay. And so we'll go ahead and reverse that gradient. And we'll put the style to radial. And then amp up the size all the way up to 150%. And change the, uh, the opacity there to like, uh, let's go 40% on that. And we'll hit OK. And so now we've just got a nice, you know, soft, like, like kind of like a metal-y looking look. I, I don't even know. <laughs> looking look I I'm I swear I'm so white so anyway let's go ahead and make our text so I'm gonna grab my text tool by hitting the letter T and so the font that I'm using for this is uh, Aller or Ailer I don't even know but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and put the link for that in the description if I can find it I don't remember where it's at and so we'll keep the style with the regular and we'll put the size to 700 points and then this little dealio I have set to crisp, it doesn't even matter. And of course, the color is black. So we'll go ahead and click somewhere, and we'll put in a capital P with a lowercase s. And let's just go ahead and click and drag this a little more towards the middle, somewhere around there. And we'll hit that little check mark right there to confirm that. And so if these letters are a little further apart in terms of spacing, you're going to want to go to this little uh, character menu over here. And if you don't have that, you can go to window character right there. And so you're going to want to set the AV to negative 80. And that'll just kind of squish the P and the S a little bit closer together, okay? So once you've got the AV set to negative 80, uh, we can go ahead and get into making this into a 3D object. So the easiest way to go about doing this is to go to 3D Repose Text Layer. And so we'll just hit yes to rest, uh, rasterize that object. And in just a little bit, you'll see the, uh, the Repose box come up. And so you're probably not going to see the 3D ground plane and the lights that I have activated. So you're going to want to turn those on. And to do that, you'll just go to this uh, icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the Repose box and give that a click. And just click 3D ground plane and then go back and click the 3D light. And that will turn on the lights and the ground plane for you to see. So we'll go back to the actual extrusion on this and we'll change the depth to 0.5. And you know, actually, let's change that to 0.3, make it a little bit, a little more shallow there. And then we'll go to the height on the bevel and we'll change that to 8. And then we'll change the width of the bevel to 6. And then we'll go to the mesh quality right here and change that from draft to best. And so once you've got all of those settings, we'll hit OK. Come on, work with me here. There we go. And so obviously we didn't see a whole lot happen because, well, the entire thing is black. So to fix that, what we're going to do is go over here to the PS3D object and double click where it says PS. And so that will open up the rasterized PS text that we made earlier. And so we're going to want to give this uh, maybe a bluish look, kind of similar to that in Photoshop icons. So I'm actually going to go and open up this uh, Photoshop icon that I downloaded from Google. And so I'm going to zoom in on the bottom of this. Uh, let's go right about there. And I'm going to click my foreground color and just kind of click on that dark shade of blue. 
hit OK. Then I'll zoom out, pan up, and zoom back in on the top right here. Click on my background color and sample that lighter blue right there. Not the really bright one, just this little, uh, this one right here. And we'll hit OK. So now we've got the, the darker and lighter blue from that uh, sample does our foreground and background color. So now we can go ahead and go back to our PS text right here. And we'll go ahead and give that a gradient overlay. And you can just uh, click the little drop down arrow and click that first icon to get that dark blue to light blue gradient and hit OK. And so once that's applied, just go ahead and save that with Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac. And once that's saved, you can just close out of that because we don't need it anymore. And so we'll go back. Hey, stop adding text, stupid thing. There we go. So anyway, go ahead and go back to the text. Oh, that's not the text that we're... Oh, wait, yeah, it is. I forgot that we just changed how that looked. <laughs> All right, so anyway, there's one more thing that we're going to want to change with this text, and that's to go to the PS Extrusion Material and give that a double click. And so this is going to show up blank right now. That's okay. Just go ahead and fill that in with blue by hitting Alt Backspace, or let's see, it's a Command Delete if you're on a Mac. Actually, no, that would be Alt uh, Option Backspace because Control and Command, those are the ones that alternate. So anyway, uh, Option Backspace for you uh, Mac users out there. And so now we're going to go ahead and actually add a gradient overlay on top of that. And so go ahead and uh, click on that gradient right there to change it up. Double click, hey, stupid Adobe Air, get out of the way, messing up my video. <laughs> I don't like it when you do that. What's with this anyway? No, I don't want to update. What the freaking A? Go away. Cancel. Shoo. Gosh, I swear, Adobe sometimes. So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, distractions aside, go ahead and double click that white slider right there. And so we'll just go and sample our uh, foreground color right there and hit OK. So that way we've got a black to dark blue gradient and we'll hit OK. Hit OK again. And let's go ahead and save that once again with Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac. And once that's done saving, just go ahead and hit the little X on that to close it. And so that'll go ahead and finish up all of the adjustments that we have going on for the PS. Okay, so now that this looks all nice and pretty, we can go ahead and set this up to start casting our 3D shadows. So the way we're going to do that is by going over here and selecting our 3D object rotate tool. And we're going to click and drag upwards while holding shift to kind of start spinning that. And so we're going to make that kind of uh, flat-ish, maybe, uh, maybe angled down just a little bit because obviously 3D perspective, you know, just kind of uh, changes that up a little bit. And so now we're going to go over here to our 3D scene menu. And if you don't have that, you can bring that up by going to window 3D. And so now we're going to go to this uh, right hand uh, arrow right here and give that a click. And click snap object to ground plane. And so after a second, that will go ahead and move that object down so that it's actually sitting on the ground plane. And so you can imagine that this ground plane is like a floor or eventually like a wall or something if you were to spin it, which is actually what we're going to kind of do. So let's actually go and grab our 3D rotate camera tool and let's click and drag upwards while holding shifts until the camera is looking down on the PS. And so like I was saying, I'll just kind of zoom out so you get an idea of what's going on you can kind of picture this uh, ground plane as a floor. So this floor is what's actually going to be catching the 3D shadows that we're going to be trying to create. But in order to, to uh, turn those on, we're actually going to have to go to that little side menu again on our 3D scene and turn on the ground plane shadow catcher. And when you click that, you're going to get this little menu that says, uh, in Adobe Photoshop CS5, shadows on the ground plane catcher will only be visible for ray trace rendered quality settings. And so uh, we'll just hit OK and I'll show you what it means. It's saying that this quality setting right here needs to be set to ray trace in order to actually see the shadows. But we're not going to worry about that yet because that's going to take a lot of processing power and we want to set up our lighting first. So we'll go over here to our lights by uh, clicking this fourth icon right here. And so as you can see, um, Photoshop automatically creates three infinite lights. And this is actually pretty convenient because we're going to need these to actually make the shadows. So go ahead and select one of the infinite lights, set the softness all the way to 100%. And then once that's done loading, go ahead and go to this 3D light rotate tool. 
And so just go ahead and click on this little ball that you see and just kind of click and drag it. And so that way you can kind of get an idea of which direction that light is actually pointing. And so just kind of put this, well, wherever the heck you want the shadows to, to go. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put this off to the side like that. So that way it kind of lights up the interiors of the those 3D objects right there. And then I'll go on to the second light, put up the softness to 100% once again. And once that's done loading, we can, uh, let's see, where should I have this go? Maybe have this just very gently going downwards like that and go to our third light, put the softness all the way up to 100%. And as soon as that's done loading, we can drag this up and let's aim it a little down and to the right, maybe something like that. And so once all of those lights are in a position that you want, well, you can go back to the, uh, the scenery over here by clicking that first icon. And for the time being, let's just change the, uh, the quality to ray traced draft. That way it doesn't spend too much time on the shadows and it'll just kind of give us an idea of where they're going to be at the time. So we'll just give this a moment. Uh, I'll go ahead and fast forward it for you so you don't have to sit there and wait forever like I do. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, so I just went ahead and kind of stopped it from loading. Um, to, if you want to do that when you guys are doing your own things, if you want to interrupt that, um, what's it called, the, that render process, just kind of click on one of the menus or something and that'll kind of interrupt it for you. And so I'll go to my move tool so we don't see all the grids and such. And so you can kind of get an idea of where all those shadows are being cast thanks to those 3D lights. And by judging where those are going, you can actually make adjustments to where your lights are. So I'll go back to my 3D scene, and let's go to the lights, and let's go to the uh, the light rotate tool. And so I kind of want to take this light right here and make it point a little more down. So I'm going to pull this up so that's pointing a little more down. And let's just kind of see where it's going now. Okay, so I have an idea of where this is going with the lighting and such, so I'll just click somewhere to interrupt that rendering process. Hey, listen to me. There we go. And so, um, I don't know. I actually kind of like where it is, except I kind of want to put this light a little more to the left, like so, so that's kind of casting downwards like that. I'm going to interrupt it again. Come on, stop. There we go. And now I'm actually going to go over here and grab our, uh, let's get our 3D object slide tool. And I'm actually going to click and drag downwards to slide the um, slide the PS object a little bit closer to the camera. And that also actually brings it up off of the ground plane. So now the, the shadows should show that there's kind of a like a gap between the floor and the words themselves. And so that's the general look that I was actually kind of going for, which is actually pretty nice. All right, so I think we've actually kind of covered the idea of the direction of lights and that well enough. So uh, once you're actually ready to uh, render this in a final format so you can save it as a picture, go back to that, uh, that 3D scene and change the quality to ray traced final. And just let that sit there for maybe, I don't know, like uh, it would probably be like a half hour or so at most. Well, actually, no, it, it actually depends on your actual computer and the size of the document you're working on. So it could be 10 minutes, could be 15 minutes, could be a whole like hour or two before this thing's actually, you know, worth looking at with the shadows because obviously this is really grainy looking. But once it's at a point where you, uh, where you think it looks good, go ahead and click somewhere to interrupt it because this thing will literally render for days on end, just going back over and tweaking it to make it look better. So just get it to a point where you think it looks good and interrupt it by clicking on a menu or something. And then once you're done, just go ahead and, you know, file, you know, save as a JPEG at, you know, the highest quality possible. And so, yeah, that's the general idea behind working with 3D objects and 3D lights to cast 3D shadows. So uh, hopefully you guys learned something new from this tutorial. I think it's pretty cool in itself that you can actually cast 3D shadows in Photoshop. 
And so yeah, if you guys haven't already subscribed to us, please do. We love subscriptions. And please like this video if it helps you out and share it with others that are using Photoshop if you so choose. And also if you guys are Facebook junkies, please follow us on, or not really follow us, come like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And you can always just, you know, join in that way. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I will go ahead and see you guys another time.